Hello, everyone. Thank you all for joining today's webinar. Hello, Andrea. Hello, Ricky. Thank you all for joining. Thanks to attendees. Uh, my name is Mazen from Education Basket. I'm the head of marketing and sales. Uh, today's webinar will be about uh, design and marketing. So as you all know, the, the whole world has shifted and changed. It is an unprecedented crisis that we are going on that is happening in the world today in the modern history. For the past five months, we have been on lockdown. We changed our habits, our everyday, uh, everything we've doing, we've, we're doing has been is changing. So we are also asked to stop seeing our friends and family and businesses have changed, education has changed. This is why Education Basket has decided to start a series of webinars to give information for students in the region, in the Middle East region, uh, the MENA region and professionals uh, information about how to go their uh, everyday lives and business after this uh, pandemic is over. And this series of webinars uh, will tackle five different topics uh, in energy and engineering, which was happening last week. Uh, there's also design and marketing today. We have finance, psychology, and also uh, technology and uh, innovation uh, on the 20th of August. So today's speakers are from uh, the acad an academic speaker coming from IED. And we also have uh, a, a, a speaker coming from the corporate world, uh, Ricky Dacuni. Uh, we will start with uh, Andrea Tossi, uh, who is coming from uh, IED, International Institute for the Design. Uh, I will read the bio of Andrea. Andrea Tossi has a background in cognitive sciences and user experience design. He worked as a researcher and designer at CNR, Psychologia, Roma, and uh, DARC Milano. He has 20 years of experience in design education, both design. He specializes in development, management of educational programs, academic quality, and accreditation. International marketing and business development in higher education, as well as academic partnerships and cultural development. He collaborated with companies and created agencies in the area of design, methodologies, and innovation. Uh, welcome, uh, Mr. Andrea, uh, to uh, today's webinar, and thank you for uh, being a guest speaker. Um, Andrea, uh, we would like uh, to know from you um, what you like in terms of uh, your experience in the academic field uh, with the design. If you can share with us your presentation for 10 minutes. Uh, All right. Thank you, Mazin, for your introduction, uh, for uh, this great initiative. Uh, we are all um, trying to stay in touch, to share thoughts through um, webinar and, and core conferences. Um, so I'm going to share my screen. Here we are. Okay, as Mazen introduced them uh, from IED, Institute of Reproductive Design, which is the, the major um, uh, institution in design education in Italy and one of the biggest in Europe. We have 12,000 students, 11 campuses in uh, Italy, Spain, Brazil. It's a, it's a big institution. It's one of the biggest one. The first has been established uh, 50 years ago as a pioneer uh, in, the, in the, the field of design education. Design education is strictly connected with um, uh, the world of uh, work, the professional work in, uh, in design. Design is not a discipline like uh, um, 
architectural engineer science uh, philosophy with a body of knowledge consolidated over uh, uh, centuries of uh, cultural production is quite uh, young recent uh, uh, discipline so uh, we have to interact uh, with professionals and uh, with the world of uh, the, the world of production uh, in the field we are as a design uh, uh, education institution so interior design furniture design fashion design and the all areas of visual arts including interaction design graphic design illustration and then we have also a, a school of focus in communication so um, the uh, bond with uh, companies is daily uh, because the students run projects with the companies and uh, the companies are facing a, a big change after the pandemic emergency and they are they will tackle this uh, big change with us with our faculties and students jointly as usual uh, um, learning by doing a uh, hands-on project are part uh, are, are our pedagogy actually our our teaching method but uh, uh, more and more the company with whom we are used to cooperate um, are uh, how to say desperate um, for to have more design um, to in order to tackle this great crisis so and uh, we come out with this concept of sustainability through aesthetic uh, sustainability is a wide concept um, and it's a global concept because uh, the green uh, emergencies the same than the covid emergency are uh, uh, moving across borders barriers uh, national state uh, so we need uh, um, a global cooperation in order to face this kind of crisis um, the politics of uh, closing uh, uh, the nationalism the rising nationalism uh, are not able to face uh, such kind of crisis uh, covid and uh, um, uh, the emergency of uh, uh, pollution uh, and uh, uh, the issue of sustainability which are strictly connected to each other eh? um, we have scientific demonstration that the most polluted area of the world has been affected uh, much more than other by the virus uh, in italy we have an area <coughs> in north italy uh, that is in one of the most affected in terms of death uh, by the the this emergency due to the coronavirus um, and of course this area is uh, quite polluted because uh, the production of co2 and the production of um, um, uh, smoke and pollution especially the air pollution so how a designer can we have a role in this uh, complex uh, war, in co uh, complexity in this uh, um, complicated um, world of course designers are taking care of uh, uh, look and feel uh, the, the aesthetic of objects but we will see that this is just a, a first touch point and behind a beautiful aesthetic and behind a beautiful object uh, we can have a complex uh, strategy useful also to face uh, um, a crisis uh, like the environmental crisis uh, and the coronavirus crisis of course uh, sustainability and the the war against the pollution is a matter for other uh, uh, discipline like the engineering of material those who study engineering uh, are spending a lot of uh, energies uh, in finding solution uh, starting from material, this is a company based in Italy called the Novamont, who produce Matter B, which is a plastic made of corn, 100% of corn. And this plastic now is uh, the plastic we currently use for the shopping bags. 
the plastic shopping bags are, uh, are, uh, are, um, are banned, are forbidden. This is a, a green, yeah, maybe it's a green solution. But, um, yeah, yes and no, because of the side effect. So um, if I trash this shopping bag uh, in a couple of months, it's going to dilute it in the ground, in the soil, soil. But to produce this shopping bag, even if it's sustainable, it's 100% sustainable, I produce uh, uh, pollution. So the plants who produce this plastic produce CO2. And this is the problem of all disposable items. So the designer will be asked to this great revolution to cancel from our mind of customer everything is disposable and the idea is to have uh, super long lasting products products that last forever not just for your uh, uh, human being life but for many generation of uh, human beings could be matter of um, national heritage this is a provoke guys to say that uh, uh, we can do something to contribute to uh, our environment. Um, we design, uh, <clears throat> of course, uh, to make easier the uh, process of disassembling and remanufacturing. We have uh, a big pollution uh, from our uh, electronic devices uh, that are pivotal now in, during uh, uh, the segregation at home, uh, during the smart working. We are uh, surrounded by PC, uh, smartphones, and electronic device. But these devices are supposed to, to have a short life. And when they go to the landfill, it's very, very easy to disassemble uh, or even harder to remanufacture. So an effort in design and produce to disassemble different material, different components, different uh, um, could be very, very uh, relevant for us. Um, what about logistics and distribution? Um, there is a lot of design and creativity in uh, um, at IKEA. This is um, uh, a container, a typical container, uh, in, in in a um, ready to be with a package uh, of a table um, produced by IKEA. Ready, ready to be shipped uh, all around the world. And the revolution of IKEA was to uh, pack in a full uh, a table in a very small uh, box. A small box meaning that you save a lot of costs in transportation and in shipping uh, tables uh, around the world because in the same container, instead of having 10 tables, now we can have 100 tables. But in that way, the table became uh, disposable which is horrible for a, a product designer so imagine to have a, a, a table that is going to be dismantled after uh, 10 five years of service having in mind that the table was a matter of a family heritage the grammy was supposed to live to the 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 next generation. Um, we have a lot of uh, effort in communication. Sometimes this generates just the greenwashing. So behind a facade, uh, you don't have any uh, intervention uh, against the, uh, the pollution and the environmental crisis. This is a very beautiful building. Look like uh, green because uh, uh, the facade is in wood, but behind of that you have a very um, old style building um, that needs a lot of energy to, to, to stay alive. And this is a green washing, it's just a facade. So the problem is in terms of overproduction. Everybody during this lockdown had the chance to think about uh, um, Consumption habits, basically because it was hard uh, to shop things and items because everything was uh, 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 was closed. Uh, the shopping experience was not possible. 
Um, and then something happened. Um, Giorgio Armani, who is uh, our probably most famous fashion designer, declared at the beginning of the pandemic crisis that uh, he will stop to run four uh, collection per year. Uh, because this is an, it's not any more sustainable uh, uh, business model, huh? producing uh, four collections, presenting four collections, asking people uh, traveling from all around the world, from uh, uh, Lebanon, uh, China, United States, to visit Milan, to see the, uh, the last uh, uh, collection designed by George Armand. Philip Stark from France, the same, refresh the concept of uh, uh, less is better, less is more. Uh, that is an old concept uh, by Dieter Rams, which is a German designer. It's a bit, uh, you know, uh, mm, boring in terms of aesthetic, but uh, uh, the achievement is the same. So reduce the uh, production, change the consumption habits of uh, our customer and this is going to be a big fight with our uh, friends from marketing and uh, and sales uh, from marketing because uh, uh, we will stop courting um, the each individual wants and needs and desire of each customer uh, so in the last decades, uh, if you have, uh, you know, a critical view, you can see that the movement like mass customization, uh, design your own uh, um, uh, single uh, piece, uh, the unique piece uh, um, was the trend. But that was very, very um, unsustainable. Um, so, um, and the salesperson, the same, are supposed to sell, to sell, to sell, to sell more. So, this big crisis um, provoked, uh, make, made a kind of click in the mind of the customer and they say, okay, uh, I need to stop that, I need to change my mind. There is another world which is possible. Uh, I want to take this word as, a, as an option. And uh, we have finally the role of designer. So how designer can uh, design super long-lasting products? One way is to grab to source from the local heritage. You have a lot of uh, uh, tradition and, uh, and heritage, and you are a, a reference country for the whole Arabic countries. But uh, this is a bad example. This is not the right way. This is just a joke. Uh, this uh, design uh, is poetry, designed by Drog Design, a Dutch design studio. And they got inspiration from traditional uh, Ikebana, no? the, 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 the poetry, the vase where you can put the flowers from a local tradition of Holland, but this is a joke, so it's not a long-lasting uh, product. So, so I will show you some bad uh, example of design and some good example. Um, um, Non-design, you say, okay, I don't want to uh, put any aesthetic, but this is not design, uh, not good. It's very sustainable, but it's not good for us. The reuse of trash, this is another very bad example. So this guy, reuse oil barrel, very polluting items, and transform them in chairs with uh, an aesthetic effect which is quite poor. This is not design. Then you have someone who use uh, technology with consciousness and uh, some other that uh, don't use. This is uh, just a show off of solar panel and the last cutting edge technology to save energy in the building, but there is no value, no aesthetic. Is quite poor as an outcome Inst instead of uh, the very well known Institut de Mondarab in Paris, when you have a very beautiful Arabic inspiration decoration, these small holes, but each of them is working like a camera frame, uh, a diaphragm, but open and closed according to the interior of the building needs of light. Very smart solution. 
This is in the fashion is evident. I mentioned Armani, but there is other band. This is seasonal. Eh? If you go out with this back the night, eh, people think about you are crazy. If my wife goes instead of this evergreen bamboo bag designed 80 years ago by Gucci, is still a good design, still valid, is still fashionable, is still working over fashions, over trends. Um, um, but it's 80 years old, and if I buy, if my Grammy uh, buy, uh, it can, it, it, it's still, uh, it's still good to go out the night. The same with the te technology of this phone, that is still good in terms of aesthetic and design, but absolutely not working anymore because of software. And you have a uh, um, freshly updated phone, which is out of fashion um, in terms of design. And they do that not by mistake, they do by purpose to sell more. Everything uh, like aesthetic obsolescence will, uh, will stop uh, very, very soon because the customers are bored about a stupid purchase, like this watch inspired by 007, Bond and Spy, Adventure. You can buy, you can wear to feel like a a spy for a, a couple of weeks, then you will feel shame about yourself, about uh, your uh, purchase, and uh, will you will put on a clothes, and will be will be will be afraid about that. Instead of uh, these pure designs, very simple, looking to design itself, working very well. So, in order to uh, come to conclusion, uh, one way and the Italian way to make uh, evergreen product is to source, to grab from our uh, uh, origins, from our DNA, from our cultural heritage. This cafetier, this mocha, mocha is a very Italian, it's a very common object in each housewife uh, kitchen. You have one of them, it's used to brew coffee, has been inspired by declaration of the designer, by, inspired by this church dome. And the name is dome, cupola, in Italian means dome. It's not so well-known chair, it's a, it's, it's a chair, one of the 1,000 chair we have in Italy. But the designer say, okay, I want to design something beauty and long-lasting like a monument. So the Italian housewife during the lockdown can uh, have the same beautiness uh, of uh, a, a typical Italian skyline without uh, going out uh, from their uh, uh, home because of the lockdown. And this is a success in terms of sales because uh, it's in the uh, catalog of Alessi, the company who produced that, from 25 years and is still good sale. No one from marketing and sales will uh, uh, think about uh, delisting this product from, uh, from the catalog of Alessi because it's a commercial success, even if it's, still, uh, it's, even if it's very old in terms of uh, project, it's still working uh, in terms of aesthetic very well. So the whole history of uh, uh, Italian design is based on this uh, uh, innovation through tradition and this is a way to make super long lasting a product this is the italian way the german will uh, have another way the lebanese another way so the common aim for each design culture uh, of uh, all the world countries would be to make long lasting products and support this change of paradigm this big change of business model uh, from a consumeristic uh, um, economy based on uh, disposable, on use by using and trash, to another kind of economy where probably uh, after sales service uh, will be very important, will play a pivotal role in order to produce less, better, and make. Uh, keep alive uh, our items uh, as much time as possible. This will be the next challenge for our uh, uh, new generation of designers. And uh, the ID, my school, is already, you know, equipped and is already um, 
completely set it up in order to answer in terms of education to this um, to this uh, um, challenge for the future so this is my my perspective kai i'm, I'm more than open to have q a Q &A. i overlap time of course i'm sorry about that no so thank you thank you Mason. and uh, Thank you so much for this uh, very informative and interesting presentation. Uh, we all like the Italian way, of course. <laughs> Thank uh, you. Stay with us uh, till uh, we finish the second presentation with Ricky. Sure. And for the ones who are raising their hands in the uh, uh, panel uh, box and the attendee box, uh, it's better if you write your questions in the Q&A. Uh, section for everyone to see and we will answer your questions after we're done with uh, Ricky. So please everyone who, who, if you have a question please write it in the Q&A box. Thank you. So we move on now to uh, Ricky Dacuni. Let me introduce Ricky. He is the CEO uh, and C CCO of uh, Tarte au Poir Experiential Agency. He will be tackling the marketing aspect of uh, design and also talk about advertising as well in this uh, 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 day and age uh, with also the uh, COVID pandemic uh, emergence. Uh, Ricky has started his experience uh, very young, uh, at, as a very young age, as an account handler and planner for multinational agencies, having performed for various countries in the MENA region across various categories. His 20 years agency life ranged from Grey Worldwide, JWT, Sachi and Sachi, and NC Sachi. His flair of next-gen communication revolution led him to leave traditional agencies and found his experiential agency based in Beirut. Scope covering the entire Mediterranean Sea and Gulf with special focus on Dubai and Morocco with satellite offices. He is a fierce innovator in the field, mixing traditional techniques with next-gen tools to create disruption and experiential feelings, solid ethics, and planet health activism. Very interesting profile. <laughs> Uh, welcome, Ricky, uh, to this uh, webinar. Thank you for being with us. Um, allow me to unmute the mic. Now we can hear you. Um, yes, hello everyone, and thanks for the invitation. Uh, I'm also very glad that my panelist was Mr. Kosti on this webinar. Uh, I'm ready to move on to the presentation if you will. <laughs> Okay, so um, I'm going to share actually our personal experience, uh, what happened with us this year in 2020. Uh, this year I definitely uh, witnessed a certain disruption. However, in the communication field, we're used to disruption. Actually, we feed on disruption, we feed on novelties. Uh, what happened this year compared to the previous year, the previous years were on, on the apparition of the various tools like TV, print, newspapers, and lastly, the digital uh, era where agencies had to uh, take their share and uh, had to quickly adapt to the new uh, uh, landmark. Uh, with witness this year, uh, with several parameters going together, a real disruption and a speed one. It looks like if we don't follow, if we don't get up, uh, up to speed within this uh, communication or new communication landscape uh, that is built with its own audiences, where it's built with novelties and the creations and, and, and a conscious uh, maturity that is happening, uh, it seems that people will be left behind. So today I'm questioning, is the communication on the reset mode or actually uh, is, it, uh, is it the moment that you were all waiting for where things change drastically? Uh, we'll answer with this question after this uh, presentation. So, as you know, and as we witness, and as we're reading around, we know somehow that the COVID-19, one of the things that happened is it accelerated every business. Let it be small businesses, let it be... Uh, corporation, large uh, businesses, or the communication industry uh, within all its categories. So traditional communication, digital communication, or the experiential uh, way of doing so. People reacted, people needed uh, to get up to speed, to propose to the world, uh, 
uh, new things that would make them pass this period, uh, this pandemic. And this is where innovation comes, when there is the, a, real, a real drive or a real challenge that is sometimes a danger to a certain uh, sphere, things or, or creative ideas happen. So people went in a lot into technology. Uh, as Andrea was saying, that we are living on uh, webinars where most of our businesses is happening online. There's a lot of technology use. Of course, this is not the only matter that helped also accelerate things, but I'm going to focus a bit more, coming from an experiential background, on what technology and how technology helped out the new generation of the communicator, and also what kind of talent pool are now needed. I mean, as an agency, we're looking into fresh minds, fresh talents, different expertises right now that would design or help us create or co-create the future of the communication we speak about. So, as we know, communication always answers specific business objectives. Business objectives, the world is changing. There is a certain pandemic happening. There are certain challenges to answer. But at the same time, the communication also answers consumer. Consumer new aspirations, consumer new needs, or consumers' views uh, to the world, or brand, or aspirations. So if you remember, the consumer was a bit loud lately, co-creating with brands, or creating his own, or also always having his opinion out loud online or, or spoke. But the consumer also had the chance to rest, to quarantine, to evaluate his priorities, evaluate his lifestyle, what is important for him, what is important for the world, what is his input to the world. So that is kept in mind. At the same time, everybody had lived a virtual experience. A virtual living, it can be just a sports activity or a chef cooking live or even uh, a Zoom party or Zoom conferences or, or even virtual conferences. People lived the new experience for a few months, which I believe is now attached to our understanding of conventing itself. And one of the few examples is that Zoom meetings would save you time. And time has now become a bit more important. We're spending less time on the streets and, and more time thinking about ourselves. So our, our needs are evolving and changing. There is a serious quest for trust and expertise. We want the truth. We want real things. We do not want bad promises or we do not want just words. We need actions. We need things to happen. And we also notice in, in our part of the region as well that, of course, there are several, um, uh, uh, several uh, ways of seeing this. But there, is, uh, there, there were people buying a little less non-meaningful things to them, thinking more about the planet, trying to produce themselves things that they need. So this is a consumer or some chapters that are important to, the, to, to what we're speaking about today. So we also notice that now audiences want to see great stories. They want to, from, from one end, they want to maybe forget about what just happened. Uh, but they also need to see more sense, more truth, more uh, positive stories or positive drivers happening in the surrounding. So this is a prerequisite. Uh, we cannot claim not knowing this about our audiences. And we also see uh, a rise, a rise that is happening from uh, since a few years, but a total rise of a generation of Twitch yourself. They like co-creating brands, which, uh, which is common. They are content creators all, over, all around you. They are becoming also multitaskers. They learn, they go online, they learn new skills. And this is very important also in the communication field, uh, knowing more skills, uh, uh, understanding different platforms or different ways, uh, merging talents is, very, is becoming very important. Like, um, uh, discovering new, 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 new ways, new eras, new maybe sustainable also uh, solutions for a certain problem, certain communication uh, uh, tool addressed is very important uh, nowadays. Uh, they are also very much uh, tech driven and always challenger, always wanting more and always be able to go for more. Of 
course, it is, is of interest. So, passive communication might not be totally there, not not within this era. We got some briefs, uh, as uh, as I say, um, uh, we got some briefs from multinational clients that had very strict rules and very strict guidelines, and the guidelines are very specific all over the world. We got uh, we we got. Uh, uh, some briefs uh, that, uh, that were uh, asked, that the clients would ask us, please disregard within this season or this, this period our guideline if it doesn't work for the consumer. Uh, try to speak their languages. Try to go out of this bubble of, of branding. Think, innovate, think what works better for the cause or for others. So just going out for with simple brand promises or slogan or taglines or you say it does not work uh, anymore or does not work as efficiency efficiently anymore. So let's say that the, I consider that 2020 mission was to accelerate positive change. Positive change in going forward in the things that activists was for fighting for. Let it be on a nurse conscious uh, sphere, let it be on uh, authentic uh, speech, let it be also on real communication, communication that is valid, that is giving back to the, com the, the community, that is making progress to the community. So things accelerated right now. And we've been actually in the agency really trying to explore different dimensions, running, uh, discovering new tools, new ways, new sustainable manners to achieve those smart objective which the clients and brands were asking from us. So it has an accelerating uh, purpose. How does this happen in a very well summary? So brands and the communication has accelerated with accepting the modernization, signing in that we want to go in this era, trying new things, perfecting new things, recycling maybe new things, reimagining solutions. Thinking always smart, but smart digit in the digital world, or smart being more sustainable, more, more uh, making sense to the reality of things. A lot of brands were also thinking people. It's the time to think about uh, the brand's role in the development of self-development of people or personal development. All the brands were communicating what's in it for you, what's, what's good for you. Naturality came in also as well. Uh, on, there's a lot of work to do on this chapter, of course, but there's actually a bigger awareness uh, on, a, on a local level and a, on a globe level. Things are being said right now and more seriously. Experience matters. Brands need more and more to provide a real experience, an experience that embeds its uh, own genetics or DNA, but made uh, made more natural, made with an immersive uh, feel, made real, uh, rather than just simple, beautiful design with no uh, soul. Hybridization is also on the line, and this is also very important for the future, maybe, of the communication sector. When the digital age arrived, uh, the digital age uh, recruited loads of uh, generation Z or generation Y uh, experts in the digital world to cope with the, the, the moving, with the, with the change, with the shift of uh, parameters. Uh, right now, we're witnessing also lots more hybridization. A production manager within an agency of communication is not simple, a uh, simple printer or production for regular stuff. The production managers need to start discovering, start uh, going into what's the, the, the new product that can be cheaper maybe or be better for the, the environment or can be used several times. Uh, hybrid, uh, hybridization is also discovering being an expert on using different, sometimes free platform or apps uh, within a certain communication tool that makes the whole experience a bit more uh, sensorial or, or, or involving senses and emotions, the real ones. So we also notice that the world seems a bit more accessible than ever. I mean, I, I always say this, um, that um, I've, I've, uh, despite the confinement, I've been uh, connected to the world in a, in a, in a, in a manner, unprecedented manner. I've been 
dealing or discussing topics with people from around the world, or with following the webinars with people around. I've been conducting uh, businesses and 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 and, and uh, co-creating platforms with various uh, people in the communication field from around the world by sitting sometimes at home. I'm, I'm rarely from the office because people were working from home. So this is this is also something to keep in mind. So to, to move in to a, to a few examples, uh, and I'll run through those quickly if anybody has questions, then uh, go for it. So it all started with a movement during this pandemic of giving back movement. It started with gyms or magazines or, 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 or personal trainers giving free courses to everybody. Brands wanted to make good during these times. The clubs uh, in, in, uh, in Lebanon, in my country, came all together to make one virtual big event over three days uh, where all the funding, all the money would go to the staff that were not working during these times. Uh, even Domino's Pizza has created this home, home how to make your own home film festival. It's not about the product or the brand anymore. It's about what, how you create your own experience on a bigger level than just the brand and the taste and uh, simply a, a brand promise. Uh, of course, the free advice and secret recipes of the biggest restaurants in the world. But we also saw, and that was interesting, a rewarding the kindness. Uh, the example I'm going to highlight here is the Cadbury shop or pop-up shop, where people could trade anything for chocolate bars, any donation that you would give to people in need. And those were some trends that would reshape the mindset of, of people, reshape the way of uh, business, uh, conducting a business of, or promoting a business actually to a better end. Of course, everything related to Echo, I'm, I'm not dragging on this uh, slide. But now we're moving to an experiential. So this is our way of expertise. Experiential is actually a very good merge between strategic communication taken to a live experience. We relay on an experience that people or consumer can feel. We transform the communication message into uh, a sensorial, a 360, let's say, experience which people can manipulate the, the way they want it or the way they see it best. So the same rule applies on any, any channel of communication. Communication starts with a story, with storytelling. Let it be uh, a print and design, it's a story. There's a niche, there's a background, there's a well research and a certain message. Uh, same applies to a TVC or any communication tools. A story is set, uh, materials or content are being defined so that the appropriate story comes up. In the experiential field, we add a new, the, the era of customization. People do interact with what we give them as design or as an idea and turn them, turn it to their advantage to obviously later on share. Share on social media or share uh, between friends or share as a story or tell others about their experience. People remember better experiences and true experiences they live rather than uh, reading it sometimes. But this all depends on the person as well. So a few examples about things we have done as well or, or from around the region. The, the experiential goes into sense and enhancement to discovering a product or brand uh, essence um, to go into an augmented reality gamification, which has been a while, but a lot of friends offer it right now. This is my favorite and unexpected feel good stunts, uh, where in random places, positive things happen for free, of course, and without, I mean, a good branding, that's with great design, very great, great purpose, where people can interact. Uh, uh, playful roles, interactive uh, ideas, the inclusion of AI is very important uh, so far. It's still, uh, it's still new to the business, but some of the uses of AI right now in the communication are some ads speak to you, some ads rediscover, like the DK, um, uh, customize or, or re-challenge the, the, the tagline or the slogan, the way uh, AI describes you, or KitKat created AI pairing. Now we're moving to what happens right now. Virtual events happened, a lot of engagements were, were happening, a lot of different designs and expertises merge. Uh, there is a, lot, a new pool of talent needed. We're still discovering what kind of talent 
uh, are needed, but they come from different backgrounds. Different backgrounds sometimes not really used in our category. Some examples of things that you can visit later on to pinpoint virtual exhibitions or or, or the, the, the Corvette uh, uh, virtual reality uh, showroom. What is important also in all this and then increase engagement, advertising and communication scream of things. Right now we need to scream it a bit more and engage people all the time. And I guess this would be somehow a certain near future of how things will happen. Uh, that's it for, for me. Thank you, Ricky. Thank you so much. Uh, we might have uh, exceeded uh, the allocated time. However, the presentation was uh, worth it. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm going to give the floor to uh, my colleague, Maria. Uh, she will be taking the questions from the attendees. Uh, please, if you have any questions, uh, write them down in the Q&A box for Ricky and for Andrea. Um, Maya, the floor is yours. Uh, please, uh, you can uh, start asking questions to our guest speakers. Uh, my name is Maya. One second. Okay. We really apologize for that technical issue. Uh, as I was saying earlier, my name is Maya. I'm the head of counselors at Education Basket. And uh, I'd like to welcome you all again to our special webinar. Uh, thank you all for your valuable input. Uh, right now, we've actually prepared some questions from Education Basket. And uh, we will also be taking questions from the audience. Uh, please, everyone, feel free to type in the Q&A box, and we'll be happy to convey them to our speakers as well. So uh, first of all, we're going to start with our uh, student. I guess his name is Roy. Uh, actually, the question is addressed to Ricky. Uh, Ricky, uh, Roy is asking, can we say that physical activation is dead? was this going to happen anyway as part of the communication evolution but the pandemic was a fertilizer to speeding its death uh, hence uh, installation and brands activation no uh, definitely definitely nothing is there things will evolve uh, Eddie, okay, i'm sorry we can't hear you can you hear me now one second what i'm saying can you hear me Eddie, we still can't hear you can you try to mute and unmute? Yes. Okay, until uh, Ricky fixes the, the sound, I'm gonna move on to our question from Education Basket. Uh, okay, to, Andrea, to Andrea right now. As we all know, learning design relies very much on gaining practical experience when it comes to using tangible materials rather than acquiring theoretical knowledge only. How do you think will the teaching body at IED cope with the impacts of COVID-19 in that sense? Uh, Andrea, you mentioned uh, a very interesting concept, which is uh, learning by doing. So if you can please tell us more about that. Yeah, uh, learning by doing is uh, our uh, uh, pedagogy, our teaching method. So we are used to cooperate with the uh, companies. We have a direct uh, dialogue with, uh, with the companies. And, and our school uh, is actually an extension um, of a company research and design studio. Um, Mm, so, and, and, and this is quite a dynamic environment uh, and is very, to say, effective for the education of uh, students because they meet every day, almost every day, some professionals and the professional bring to the attention, to the efforts of our small group of work, some of the um, most uh, urgent issues that they have to, to tackle daily um, as, a, as work routine. Uh, of course, uh, uh, we mediate uh, between students and, uh, and, uh, and professionals because we have uh, staff and the faculty that act as a tutor and there is kind of pastoral tutoring, one-to-one uh, -one, uh, support 
uh, for uh, like in students learning uh, out of the practice out of the made success and mistakes um, and, and this is uh, the only way again uh, to teach uh, the sign uh, to, to, to have a design education um, by doing things by the sign things um, Yeah, uh, thank you so much for that. Um, we really care about uh, implementing the concept of learning by doing, especially in the, in the design field. Uh, Ricky, I think uh, the sound yes. should be working right now. I'm sorry, it was um, a problem from our side, actually. No problem. Would you like me to repeat that question or we just go ahead? The, the, the answer is very simple. Nothing is dead in the country. Everything is reinvented and reconsidered and rethought and uh, evolved to a certain matter. Um, this is actually a certain challenge we're all having right now is how do we move forward? Uh, how, what, we, what do we keep with what's existing right now and how do we take it to other dimensions that are needed for, for the consumers or for sustainability reasons or for, for uh, making more sense to, to the world? So no, nothing will be forgotten. Everything is taken into consideration, but reimagined by, 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 by new means, by, by fresh minds maybe, by new talents that we're getting from different various uh, backgrounds to support us and brainstorming with us on what's happening next. I'm done. All right, thank you so much. Uh, Ricky, I have another question for you. It's from our side as well. Uh, we feel that it is a very important question that was tackled during your presentation, but we would like to get more insight from you. Many young adults and students are confused about what to major in and do not have their future planned out yet. Based on your experience in marketing and advertising, what are the most essential skills and characteristics needed to excel in that field? Did the pandemic enforce any new realities and uh, if you would also uh, like to elaborate on the talent tool and fresh talent concepts that you've mentioned earlier in your presentation as well. Okay. Uh, basically, as uh, expertises, they're pretty much the same. And communications, design, production, uh, also uh, strategic minds are the base right now. But what you're looking for is wider experiences within talents. I mean, maybe more education or specialization into going into specific tools. Uh, a content manager, for example, or a content creator that has a certain affinity to design or has a certain knowledge into, in, in the production, it would be a better uh, prospect to, to keep in mind. It means we're widening up, we're, we're understanding, we're ascending more and we're not just specializing in one, in one uh, talent without uh, being able to oversee what's happening on the entire uh, ecosphere. So uh, the specialization can occur later on after studying the basics of the basics communication sector or you call it marketing, but it's communication that's wider than that. But let's, let's imagine a PR person that has a, that digital content, um, a digital content uh, uh, the thing on the side that's happening uh, with also creates his own uh, uh, memes or, or, or has his own blog. This, this PR person has a wider view of, of things and would, would have better chances. So I would say try to explore around several topics before specializing and try to have many uh, talents as possible or, or evolve, nurture more talent uh, as possible. All right, thank you so much. Um, we have another question from an anonymous attendee. Uh, so it's mainly about sustainability. They're mentioning that there was a lot of talk about sustainability. Is the MENA region also heading towards more sustainable design practice and methods? And I would really like to get your, the insight from both of you. Uh, I mean, um, Andrea might uh, be able to give us uh, his insight from, a, uh, from an academic background, and I'm sure Ricky can provide us with his input from a very professional background. 
So the floor is yours. Whoever wants to start. Uh, please, Andrea. His mic is up. Yeah, uh, Andrea. All right. Okay, it's working now. All right. Sure. Uh, MENA region is a source of um, uh, inspiration. Um, it's very rich of tradition, of uh, um, patterns and that can uh, um, be used uh, in order to create long-lasting aesthetics for durable products. Um, and um, Western countries, uh, uh, European uh, uh, customers, uh, are waiting for that, are looking for uh, something that is uh, from your region. Um, I'm, it's not souvenir uh, or uh, merchandising. Um, it's something that uh, is related to your culture with a, um, a deep and real storytelling behind. And you guys from Beirut, you can, you can, you are used to make uh, this uh, bond function between uh, overseas, between uh, MENA culture and uh, and European culture. So uh, I think it's time to refresh uh, this uh, this talent you have as Lebanese. Um, and I think it's a great opportunity for us. I know some companies. Uh, they are doing well in uh, in Beirut. Hmm. Now I don't remember the name of this company producing bags. Um, Star Aspec. Um, yes. This is, is clear. It's, it's, it's old. Now it's already established. It's not uh, anymore a startup because um, the business is solid. It's five, ten years. I don't remember when she started. She has a nice... Uh, uh, business model behind the social business model. So, yeah, we're ready for that. <laughs> Definitely, I totally agree. We're ready for that. Uh, there is the mindset, but unfortunately, it's not applicable. I believe there's a lot more tensions right now or other priorities to have shift. But definitely the, the mentality is getting there. There are a lot of projects, like the project of Sarah's bag that is happening in the, with entirely recycled materials or sustainable materials that would last longer, or uh, collaborations with artisans that were treated like old-fashioned to, to take their, their product to a new perspective that is more modern or coping with the, 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 real, uh, the reality or the today's uh, need. But there is a lot to do, and actually that's an opportunity. That's a huge business opportunity or opportunity for everyone to go there because it's 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 a it's a big uh, it's an immense uh, category, an immense way of uh, thinking, and uh, yeah, it's ready. It's ready to grab. Anything else? Yeah, I uh, I feel that it's very important uh, to see that light at the end uh, with all the challenges and the barriers that we might be facing, especially in that region. But uh, we can always see the opportunity from anything that is happening. Exactly. Um, right now, um, I have an interesting question to Andrea, and uh, it's the following. If we were to compare the design and fashion industry with 20 years ago, how did it change and what should students who are interested in this major expect to take away from their academic journey? Perhaps you can give us live examples related to IED's journey during COVID-19. Hey, what changed uh, from 20 years ago? So it, it changed that uh, the last, um, mm, it was kind of, especially in Italy, a lack of entrepreneurship uh, among fashion designers. So the last entrepreneurs, who started a brand, a successful brand in Italy was Dolce Gabbana. And Dolce Gabbana mm, play a lot with this innovation through tradition. Um, they focus with something that was completely unfashionable, like the traditional women from South uh, Italy, uh, wearing lace uh, with a shawl on the hat. Um, so uh, that was completely unappealing, huh? but they did a work on that and grabbing and, the so and sourcing from, uh, 
from this kind of very, very particular DNA, DNA and they were able to refresh. And now the lace are uh, appealing uh, uh, anymore and are part of the identity of Dolce Gabbana. 20 years ago, the lace was uh, horrible. It was something for Grammys uh, um, and cultivated the people from countryside uh, South uh, Italy. So, and, and this is something that we can do. Um, in, in, I'm, I'm not, and, and we force students to do this work. So, um, most of our students uh, um, feel shame about the, um, uh, their DNA, their, uh, their roots when they arrive in Milan, but we force them uh, to, to contribute to a cultural mediation, to a dialogue with their uh, um, origins. Uh, and we force them to be um, proud about their uh, uh, origins and their DNA in terms of culture, in terms of patterns. And this is hard, but this works uh, very well. And I think, again, I uh, highlight again, you as Lebanese, you already made this cultural mediation. Um, also, the, the famous, well-known, the life, the Lebanese, the Beirut lifestyle. Um, I found, when I, I, I visit Beirut, I found very nice uh, uh, locations in, in the Oreca, uh, you know, fields, like restaurants, bar, um, amazing. So I had um, very... Mm, I have to say, happy time uh, in, in Beirut. Uh, but I don't felt the same uh, in, uh, in Dubai or Abu Dhabi. So, um, because a lack of uh, a connection with uh, uh, the roots of uh, local cultures. And... Um, this is something, so that's why we are always happy to embark uh, students from Lebanon in our uh, uh, didactic uh, venture, uh, because you can support our, our, our work in cultural mediation uh, and innovation through traditions, which is, uh, yeah, thank you for the question. Thank you so much for that. Uh, Ricky, I'm going to end up that interesting Q&A session uh, with the last question uh, due to the lack of time. However, it was really an interesting session and we would like to get uh, more of your valuable feedback. Uh, Ricky, our last question uh, would be, tell us how is your company sustaining business during the worldwide recession and specifically in Lebanon? Yeah, we said before, uh, brands are uh, now thinking about the consumer and helping out the world. Uh, it's, not, it's not thinking business or, or, or uh, funds or uh, what we're doing to get more income to the agency right now. It's being supportive, being present with everyone. We offered all our existing clients uh, free initiatives, uh, consultancies about uh, activations for the well-being of the world for the well-being of their target, for the well-being of people uh, within their vicinity, their vicinity for free uh, during the pandemic. We created initiatives for mostly all our, uh, the brands we work with. A lot of them considered, a lot of them didn't because of the stress they had or the lack of time maybe or the better priorities, but this was our input. We wanted to help the brands to support the community in return. Uh, we also did a lot of CSR events on the side, but we've been busy innovating, and that's a very important point. Uh, we had to, to get up front to, to innovate and to understand what's happening within this communication uh, to shift very quickly. So we spent time and numerous hours doing webinars, talking to experts around the world, seeing where are we getting, how we can do things with less spending, how we can we uh, create uh, things respecting social distancing or engaging people or what is the new engagement or what do we do right now so believe me we've been 
very busy between trying to help the community or the brand or getting educated ourselves into going to the next uh, era. And I think we are somehow achieved uh, a remarkable uh, advancement and I hope so. We will see that in the rest of the year. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, both of you, for today's uh, webinar. It was very interesting. I hope that uh, uh, the attendees uh, took away valuable information from uh, what you had to uh, say. Um, for everyone, uh, you can check out uh, this uh, recording on our website and our YouTube channel, Education Basket. And um, if you have any questions, please send them to us by email. Uh, thanks a lot for your time and uh, hope we uh, you. You ha if you would like to join our webinar next week on finance you are welcome to do so thank you check the upcoming webinars on our website as well thank you so much thank you, thank you guys bye -bye. have a great evening bye bye, bye, -bye. thank you bye bye